Morning grade seven. We are on our penultimate week of the school year, which means second to last. So there are only eight days left of learning and we're gonna squeeze in one last math unit. When we're done this math unit, we'll be done math for the year. So yesterday you watched a video talking about the different faces, vertices, and edges of pyramids and prisms. It's especially important to understand how to see the different faces of prisms and pyramids as we move into the surface area of prisms. So, if we take a look here, we have a rectangular prism. So essentially, what we need to do is we want to find the surface area of a rectangular prism. The surface area of a prism is the surface area of all the different sides added together. Now, where it gets difficult is because we're not in school, you can't actually hold one of my uh, models of a rectangular prism in your hand. So what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to visualize all the different surface areas that we're talking about, or all the different areas of our prism. So what I have here for you is I have a net. This, this right here is the net of our rectangular prism right here. A net is basically a rectangular prism or really any prism or pyramid unfolded. And it helps you sort of visualize the different shapes that are happening. Now, not every problem that you solve is going to have a net, but I just wanted to show you where it comes from that we can find the surface area of this shape. So what you should notice in yellow here, we have two larger rectangles. Then we have our two little end pieces in blue. And then we have our skinnier rectangles right here. So we actually have three different types of surface areas that we need to find. Those same things can actually be replicated on our original surface area here. Like for example, here are my top pieces. And again, it'll be a little bit hard, but then you can should be able to see these are my skinny side pieces right here. And then don't forget that we actually will have two of these yellow pieces. We'll just be able to see through one of them right now in order to make um, in order to make this shape. We can see through it right now. So if we want to find the surface area, what we can do is we can find the area of each of these different rectangles and then add them together. So let's say I'm going to call this yellow one surface area one and two. So in order to find the surface area of number one, I just do base times height. Now the base of one is actually over here, it's three centimeters times six. So I get 18 centimeters squared. That's also the same as surface area two. So I'll just keep that in mind. Okay. Then if I wanted, I could do surface area three and four. We'll call these three slash four. It's still base times height. You just have to be really careful. What is your base? What is your height? Well, if I look at the blue at the bottom here, I get three times two and I will get six. Then we finally have the purple. We'll call it surface area five and six. Base times height again. And then I get five times six and I would get 30. Now, what I need to do is I need to add those all together so I can add 36, 30 and six and 18. So I would get 48 plus 6 is 54, but then I'm actually going to multiply that by 2. And I'm going to get my surface area is 108 centimeters squared. Now the reason I multiply it by 2 is because what I'm saying is there are really two yellow surface area ones. There's two blue ones, and then there's two purple ones. Okay, another option if you wanted to is you could multiply each of these individually by two and then add them up. So the most important thing when you're figuring out surface area is to go step by step by step and make sure you've covered all the different faces. Another way to do that is this formula right here. It's a little bit small, but we have the surface area equals two of the length times width plus two of the length times height plus two of the width times height. So that's another way of putting it, um, but if you want, you can just continue to think of the six different faces. So let's say I said here that the height is five, the width is three, and let's make the length um, six, okay? So what I can do is I can think, well, I can solve it using this formula. Two times the length times the width. 
which would be 2 times 6 times 3. That's one section. Plus the length times the height. 2 times 6 times 5. I should have written so big. Plus the width times the height. 2 times 3 times 5. So if I do all of those together, I get 2 times 6 is... 12 and then 12 times 3 is 36 plus 2 times 6 times 5 which is 60 plus 2 times 3 times 5 which is 30 and then I add those all together and I get I believe 126. So if you want you can use that formula but really another way to think of it is well I need to have 5 times 3 2 times I need to have 6 times 3 2 times and then I need to have six times five, two times, because that will get me all six faces of my rectangular prism. All right, now let's move on to triangular prisms. Once again, I have here an example where I've given you the triangular prism and I've also given you the net so you can see it unfolded because it's really good to be able to visualize where it comes from. So you'll see we have our triangle and then we have um, two, two triangles and then we have three rectangles. So if I wanted to find the rectangle, what I could do first is I could just do 8 times 17 to find the area of the rectangle. By the way, grade 7, for this unit, feel free to use your calculator. Okay, it's more about using the information right now than calculating. So the area of one of my rectangles is 136. So I could even write it on my net if I want to. So I know that each of these is 136. Then I need to find the area of my triangle. So you'll remember that to find the area of a triangle, it's base times height and then you divide by 2. So you need to make sure... Um, oops, I just realized I made a mistake. So let's back up. Good thing I erased it. Can anybody see what mistake I made? I know I can't hear your answers, but I figured out what I did wrong here. I'm going to erase this 136 and this 136 because I looked more carefully at my diagram and I noticed that right along here, the base for this middle rectangle is 8. But what I noticed was this right here, this line right here, matches up with this line right here. Let's see if I can get my pen to do it. Which means that my bottom base actually for these triangles is 10 centimeters. So I actually need to do 10 times 17 and I will know that this is actually 170 and this is 170. So actually it's probably good that you saw that mistake because you can see how easy it is to think incorrectly about the different faces. So again, the base for one of my rectangles, this light orange one was eight. And then the base for my other ones was actually 10 because I can see that they fold up here. Oh, come on, highlighter. They fold up here and are the same, okay? So, sorry about that. Anyways, let's go back to our triangle. Area equals base times height divided by two. Now, I noticed my mistake before because what I actually need to do is I need to think about what's the base of my triangle? Well, my base is eight. But here's where, just like before with finding the area of triangles, you have to be careful because the height here, it's not 10, it's 6. Because the height has to go all the way up. So then I get 8 times 6, which is 48. I can divide that by 2, and I get 24. So then, to finish it off, I can add all my faces together. So I have 170 2 times, right? Then I have 136. Then I have 24 two times because there are two triangle shapes on my net. So I can add those all together. And I will get, let me just add those together, 524. I'm going to put it down here. 524 what? Centimeters squared. All right, let's do one more example with a triangular prism. Okay, so again, in this one, you haven't been given the net, so you need to sort of visualize it. The first thing I notice is I can figure out this bottom uh, rectangle here. I can do the base times the height. 
base times height, area equals 4 times 12. And so then I get the area equals 48 for that rectangle. Then I'm going to think to myself, okay, I should be able to see two other rectangles on the side. And it looks like they're here. They kind of overlap again. It's hard to see, especially because we're not in class. So I don't actually have a model to give you. But I can see that my base here is still 12. And now really the height of my rectangle going up is 7 centimeters. And I have two of those. So I can do area equals base times height. Area equals... 7 times 12, area equals 84. And then I'm just going to draw myself a little arrow, and I'm going to do there's two, because there's two of those on the other side as well. I haven't really highlighted it, but over here on this side, we have another one. Now we find the area of our, rec or of our triangle, base times height over 2. And again, my base is 4, but what is my height? It's that six centimeters going up. So I would get 12. Then when I add them all together, I'm going to add 48. I'm going to have 84 two times. And then I'm going to have 12 two times because it's either side of my rectangular prism. And then I would add those all together. So one way grade seven to make sure that you've done surface area properly is before you start, actually, would be to count all the faces and to make sure, okay, well, I have five faces. Whoopsies, there goes my lesson. Let's see if we can bring it back. Um, you can say over here in the top corner of your work, I have five faces. And then when you add at the end, make sure you have five numbers to add up. Okay, so you're going to be doing two different worksheets today because I felt like the worksheets would be more manageable than the textbook. Then the textbook is very much about applying and doing problem solving. So I figured we'd do worksheets today just to make it a little bit more manageable. Feel free to message me if you have any questions and I hope you have a great day.